All right, what's up everyone? Today we're gonna go over Bernoulli's equation. I actually got a ton of requests for this, and so the way I like to usually do physics problems is by um, giving you a really hard one, so that way if you see anything even remotely close and you can do the question I give you, you should be able to do anything that shows up on the MCAT, and that's exactly what I'm here to do today. However, uh, unlike most of my other questions, which I make by myself, I actually got this question online because I, I was looking, um, just kind of looking for resources to read up on Bernoulli's equation, came across this question, and I was so impressed by how challenging it was, I wanted to do it. Um, and so this is probably the hardest one I've ever done, but let's give it a shot. All right, it says a YouTube manometer containing water is connected to a nozzle of an air tunnel that discharges to the atmosphere. So I want to point out, look, this is the water right down here. Uh, so that's the water manometer, and at the top you have an air tunnel. So air is going through this tunnel. Um, the area ratio, A2 over A1 squared, is 24 over 25. And um, for all given operational conditions, the difference in the manometer is 0 0.05 meters. Take water density to be this and air density to be this. What is the velocity at V2? So again, there's going to be so many moving parts, so let's get right into it. Um, so the first thing is... I want you to know we're going to be considering this top phase only, right? Because we know air is moving through this. And in this case, uh, Bernoulli's equation is given to you right here in the lower left-hand corner. Um, and what you're going to see is there's two parts. P1 uh, is e plus one-half rho V1 plus rho GH1 is equal to P2, etc. So this left-hand side refers to T1, which is what's happening here. You see this? I'm circling it. That's T1. So pretend you have an air molecule right at T1 and then another air molecule right at T2. So this is referring to the two different states of the system. And you, I want to make sure you understand that rho refers to the density of gas here. Okay. So I, want, I know that you might think Bernoulli's equation is associated with liquids. It's actually associated with fluids. All right. And uh, fluids include both gas and liquid. Okay, and that's why we can use Bernoulli's equation in this case, even though it's just a gas. And the reason why Bernoulli's equation works is because it's basically just a conservation of energy law for fluids. And I'm going to make another video about that. So if you don't understand that, that's fine. Watch the other video. But for now, I want you to just know that this is what we have. So how are we, how are we even going to start? This is insane. Well, the way we're going to start is by doing the easy stuff first. Okay, the first thing what you're going to notice is from T1 to T2, the height is constant. All right, and what I mean by that is look at Bernoulli's equation. When you look at Bernoulli's equation here, I'm going to make sure you can make see this. The rho GH2 and the rho GH1 are basically the amount of height that you are above zero. Okay, and you can define zero wherever you want, but let's say I define this as zero this bottom part. Well, then you'll notice that by the time I get up to the place where V2 is, and by the time I get up to the place where we start, that's the same height, all right? And because of that, because of that, rho GH1 is equal to rho GH2 because the height in both instances are the same. And because they're the same, they're going to cancel out in our original equation, all right? Remember our original equation was rho GH1 and then rho GH2 on the opposite side, but they're the same. So they're going to cancel each other out. So now we have a similar equation, but now we it's a much more simple because we took out the rho GH term. All right, good. If you got me so far, don't worry. We're going to get through this. What is the next step, you might be wondering? Oh, man, there's a lot, all right? So the next thing we have to do now is kind of simplify this equation. So this is the equation we ended with in the last step, all right, this upper right-hand corner. What I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract P2 from the right side to the left, and I'm going to then subtract 1 half rho V1 squared to the right-hand side. All right. So what I'm going to get on the left-hand side is P2 minus P1 uh, is equal to 1 half rho V squared, V2 squared minus 1 half rho V1 squared. And now what we're going to get is we're going to have to analyze this pressure difference between uh, P2 and P1. All right. So let me think again. So remember at T2, at T2, we were told that PT2 is open to the atmosphere. So we know that the pressure at T P2 is just one atmosphere because atmospheric pressure is one atmosphere. However, at T1, at T1, you'll notice the pressure is not one atmosphere. The pressure is much more than one atmosphere as dictated by the manometer, okay? And it's higher 
than one atmosphere, specifically by rho of water. It's not rho of air anymore, it's rho of water, because remember the manometer is made of water, times g times h, because now h represents the height above which the water is. Okay, because this represents something called the gauge pressure, which is the pressure above atmospheric pressure. And so what this is telling you is that the pressure difference is that P1 is greater than the pressure at P2 by a difference of rho of air, um, sorry, not rho of air, but rho of water, right, times G times H. That is a huge, huge simplification. And now we have a better equation to look at because now we have this new equation rho of water times g times h, because that represents the pressure difference between p1 and p2, is equal to the same thing we had before, which is 1 half. Um, now I added in rho of a and rho of w to kind of differentiate, because now we have two densities we're looking at, air density and water density. All right? I know this is a lot. I know this is, this is insane. Uh, but let's keep going. Okay? Now here's the question, because sometimes you do so much math, that you forget the question. And again, you will never see something as difficult like this on the MCAT. I'm just trying to show you that if something like this even came up, the fact that you can do this insanely hard problem means you can do any other problem, all right? Always do the hardest first because you'll do anything else, all right? So what I wanted to do is I want you to recall that the problem is asking us to solve for V2, all right? And notice on the right-hand side, we have V1 and V2. So the next step should be to express v1 in terms of v2. All right, how are we gonna do that? How are we gonna do that? Well, we have to relate v1 to v2. And the other part you may have realized is in the problem stem, we were given the relationship between a1 and a2 and we haven't used that yet. So we have to figure out a way to do that. And that's gonna be through this thing called the continuity equation. All right, and the continuity equation says this right here. A1 V1 is equal to A2 V2. It's just a really smart way of saying the volume flow rate is the same at any point in time. And that's something that you can pretty much prove to yourself in, uh, intuitively because you know that when water flows, there's no gap in the water. The water is consistently flowing, whether that's a larger area or a smaller area. Water will consistently flow at the same time. All right, so if you have this equation, A1 V1 equals A2 V2, and you simplify for V1, you'll get that V1 is equal to A2 over V2 over V over A1, right? That's just simple algebra. And the great part is now we have V1 in terms of V2. So we plug this value back into our original line equation, all right? And now let's do that. Let's plug it back in. So if we do that, we'll get that the new equation will be rho of W, the density of water times the gravitational constant times height, the height that we had, equals one half rho of A, the density of air, times V2 squared minus one half rho of A times A2 V2 over A1. <laughs> this is the substitution of V1, okay? And again, you do some algebra and you find out that V2 is equal to two rho W times G times H over rho of A times one minus A squared, oh, A2 squared over A1 squared. Man, this is, this is crazy. This is absolutely crazy, all right? And if you wanted to put this all into perspective, this is all going back to this very, very first um, question we had, okay? Uh, and it's crazy that we even got this far, but let's, let's keep going. I know we can do it. So now let's just plug in everything we're given. That's all we have to do. So what is, first thing we have is two, times rho of w, what is rho of w, where it's 1,000 kilograms per meter cube, um, times g, and on the MCAT, always assume g is 10. If it's 9.8, but for the MCAT, you can do 10. And the last part is h is 0 0.005, okay? And the next thing is now you put rho of a, which is just one, right, one kilogram per meter cube, one minus a1 squared, a2 squared over a1 squared, and we're told that a2 squared over a1 squared is 24 over 25. So now we're going to simplify again. This actually ends up giving you at the top, I believe you get 2 times 10 times 2, 20,000, 20,000 uh, times 5 over 1,000, right? Over 1 over 25. I should make this square root a bit bigger. And this ends up being basically, if I'm thinking this properly, 
to one e times five one this ends up being square root of twenty five hundred and this ends up being fifty so the answer here is that v two if v two which is what we are solving for is equal to fifty meters per second okay so if you were answering this question, you would say v2 is equal to 50 meters per second. And notice how this combined the Bernoulli equation with the continuity equation, with an understanding of gauge pressure to give you this answer. This is the hydrostatic uh, do-all, be-all. Like, this is the craziest problem. If you can do this, I guarantee you, you are golden for the fluid mechanics section of the MCAT. All right, and just so we're clear here, let's make sure we go back to the beginning and I tell you what the answer is. The answer here is indeed um, E. Okay, cool. Thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful for you. I know it was challenging, but feel free to comment with questions. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching the video. Really appreciate it. If you want to check out any of my other videos, there's going to be one right here. Another link to one of my videos right here. And another video right here. Why not? I'll put one video right over here. And last but not least, if you want to subscribe to this channel, really appreciate it because I'm still an early YouTuber trying to get it down. But a subscription button should be right over here. So please subscribe. Cool. Thanks. See you guys in the next one. Hope you find these videos helpful.